So where we're seeing a lot of interest in 5G from an IoT standpoint is um, really the fact that you've got a single network uh, where you'll have specialized radios that are going to be able to encompass the very low end uh, that we've seen in the IoT market where you just have a basic connected sensor that's optimized for battery life, uh, that has low data transmission rates, all the way up to the very high end mission critical radios where you're doing streaming video, you're doing mission critical robotics um, or autonomous vehicles, and you need to have that instantaneous data transfer. And then in the middle, you have the mobile broadband spot. Uh, where you're doing everything from consumer devices to augmented reality. So you've got a single network that covers all of that, as opposed to the specialized networks for each that we're using today uh, that cover wired and wireless. Why that's important for IoT is, in particular, is you've got multiple devices that we're looking at. So for uh, 2020, we're talking about 40 billion IoT devices, right? That's your installed base. That's stuff that is IP addressable today. We're looking at that growing by 2030, 10-year period to 140 billion in terms of an install base of devices. Even the low data rate devices, that starts to be an awful lot of data that's being passed over the network and a lot of connection management that needs to happen with the network. 5G has been optimized for that. One of the real areas where you can see the improvement over the 4G network that you have today is where you have a five, uh, with 4G, you can support on NB-IoT up to 6,000 devices on a single cell. With, and with 5G, you're going to be able to support up to a million devices on a single cell. So if you think about something like an Amazon warehouse, for example, uh, where you have uh, right now, just uh, today they were announcing that Amazon is moving to one day shipping for Prime members. The reason they're able to do that is they've built these large warehouse facilities everywhere. They have a significant amount of product in them uh, in a very localized space and increasingly Amazon's been moving to robots for packing and, and distribution within the warehouse. So with a 5G network, you could see where each of the products within the facility could be tagged with an IoT sensor that's operating on that network, as well as the robots operating on that network. And you're able to track all of the product in real time, where it is on the shelf so the robot can find it quickly, where it needs to go, which package it needs to go into, all the way out the door, and have that on a single network rather than incurring the cost of multiple networks and having to manage multiple wireless technologies in that confined space. That same logic then carries over to something like smart cities, for example. And where we've seen smart cities struggle over the last year to really, over the last few years, to really grow, to really accelerate as a market, is uh, that you've got multiple network technologies that are being used. So you may have the electric meters and the water meters that are being used on cellular. You may have Zigbee that's being used for street signs, street lights. Uh, you have mission critical private broadband networks that are being used for public safety. With uh, 5G, what we have is the potential for a single network that's being used by all of the departments in the facility. So you start to get some uh, within the city. So you start to get some economies of scale. Uh, and what you're able to do with that then is, is encompass a much broader set of use cases, all with a single network technology, but with specialized radios that are optimized for the cost. Uh, so you're not paying for a very high-end radio for a very low-end use case or vice versa.